right, so what we're going to look at today is we're going to have a look at quantizing, uh, changing the velocity of our hits, and then hitting the human eyes. And what that's going to do is help us to change our MIDI notes that we recorded from our e-drums. Now, it should be important for me to note that when I recorded this, I actually had... Um, what I had done is double check my input quantize. Okay, so that's just up at the top here. So you want to check when you're recording, um, especially a MIDI instrument into Studio One, you want to make sure that your, your quantizing is going to be uh, set up in a way that you don't miss any notes. So if I had set this up, um, I'll just show you quickly here what I mean. Let's just double click that. We'll dump that. We don't need that right now. Okay, so I know towards here I played some double kicks. So, as an example, if I had set my input quantize to one eighth, I would have missed half of these notes. Okay, it would it would not have registered the note. It would have tried to just say, nope, that note doesn't sound like it's in place. We're cutting it out. And in this case, I did not want that. So I wanted uh, some double kicks in there with the time signature we have. And uh, so that's how we got these extra notes in there. And it did quantize them, uh, you know, fairly good. If you listen to like, I mean, look at this, like. Okay. I'm not that great a drummer, so definitely quantizing here. So you can see they're right on the beat there. Boom, 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 boom. And that's great. Okay. Now, the only other thing is um, my velocity is kind of all over the place here. Um, you can see right down here in the bottom here, I've got really tiny hits here. Yeah, so I, that was like kind of a ghost note there. There we go. Okay, so I can, if I really wanted to, I can just quickly edit all of this. Yeah, let's just make everything, I don't know, 80% let's say. Okay. Okay, so we've got the MIDI notes in here now. We record it over top. Okay, I think 31, bar 31 is where we started. So I'll just go like this. going to run right across. It's going to sound really robotic here, but that's not really what I'm caring about so much. Make everything kind of about the same. And I know the drum player is going to be like, why would you do that? No one ever plays that way. That's okay. This is just for demo purposes. I'm not writing a song right now. I don't think. Like, I know I was pretty close in time when I was playing it, but with the input quantize on here, it lined everything up pretty good for me. Or kept it in line. Okay, so that's how we've got the quantizing going. Now, if you really, really, really want to quantize things, you can just grab your MIDI notes here in the window, MIDI editor. Okay, grab those, and then you've got the quantize down here. Okay, so I hit the Q, it's going to give me my settings, what do I want to quantize? Well, let's say I want, uh, let's say I want 30 second notes. Okay, so you see how it added that, uh, it doubled every bar. Okay, so I'll leave it that way. Um, I just want straight notes, I don't want swing, I don't want triplets, any of that stuff. And let's see, my velocity, I want, let's say 80%. Okay, apply. So did it change anything? Well, everything was kind of pretty almost where it should be anyway. Oh, see, things got a little bit weird there. 
good right here. Oh, yeah, see, my playing was maybe a little off. I don't think it was that much off. I think maybe it just did that because it just didn't like the way I was playing. Okay, so that doesn't, I don't like that at all. So undo it, control Z will undo that. You see how everything just moved right back? Yeah, it definitely messed up the timing there. So I don't want 30 second notes. I wanna keep it at 16th, okay? Well, let's say I go to 1 8th. What happens then? Hmm, let's find out. <laughs> that sounds funny. Not how I wanted it. Okay, so you can see how keeping it at the 1 16th notes is important when you're recording, if you're going to play 1 16th notes, or 16th notes, I should say. Uh, so very important to do that. Now, the other thing we're going to look at is uh, this MIDI editor here, which we've kind of already been looking at. But anyway, we just want to have a quick look. Default velocity is set to 80%. That's my personal preference. Okay, That's kind of where I, I like my hits. If you hit it at 100%, let me just show you here what 100% sounds like. Okay, So I'll grab these. Okay, And let's move the velocity to 100%. Boom. Now. We're just going to back it up a little bit and have a listen. Okay, this part here. That does not sound human at all. The human element is that we're imperfect, right? That's the, that's the beautiful thing about making music is that not everyone plays a perfect note every single time that you hit a drum. And that's what makes things sound really robotic. So if you want things to sound a little more human, a little more realistic, you're going to change your velocity settings, okay? So what you can do is in the MIDI editor here, 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 Let's see, let's grab our macros, okay? There's a little function right here, it's called humanize. And what it does is it just basically throws uh, offsets into the hits. So it kind of adds a little bit of variation into the way that the drum has been hit, uh, both velocity-wise and timing-wise. Um, so what you can do is uh, use the humanize function, okay? You can use it here, and this gives us our adjustments. Okay, so humanize. So what do you want to do? Do you want to add, like, the, here's your range, minus 14 to 13% uh, within the velocity hit. So I like my defaults at 80%. Okay, so minus 14% is going to, you know, to 13%, it's going to throw velocities in there anywhere between, let's say, 65 or 68 to maybe 90% velocity, and that's fine. But you do have to go back and double check it because what if it throws a 90% a velocity on a snare drum hit that you actually wanted to just be a little bit lighter than your default. So you got to double check what you do here. Um, add note start range. So this is just adding a little bit of um, the, the, uh, the note that's being hit. So if it comes in as a, an exact uh, C note, Okay, the, the, the note is a C1, uh, which would be right here. What this will do is it'll just kind of fluctuate that a little bit. And if you hit a tom, you'll see the skin uh, kind of goes boom. There's a little bit of a note variation there, okay? So this is going to add note variations to every one of the notes that we tell it to humanize, okay? So I don't add a lot of variation there because I don't like my drums to be too all over the place unless they're toms, for example, or there's a lot of tom hits. Um, this is a little more important if you're recording, say, um, keyboards and, uh, I don't know, other instruments, not necessarily drums. I like my drums to be sounding the same every time they're hit, just at different velocities to give them more of a human feel. Okay, so that's the... Uh, couple of things with the MIDI editor there. So what do we got here? Okay, so this is our ride symbol. OK, 
Okay, so we can just grab those and select them. Now I don't want them at 100. Okay, all the black notes that are selected here are the ones that I have there. All the red ones are the velocities of the notes that I don't have selected. So what I can do here is change my velocities. Okay, the average velocity of these is 78. I want it to be 80. Okay, so it didn't change the 100 ones. Why didn't it change that? Because I had them above 80. So what I want to do now is I want to take, I'm going to grab control. I'm going to hold control down. Okay, now that gives me my pen. And I'm just going to drag across. Okay, you see as I drag across, it bumped everything down to where I wanted it. And this is where you can be creative with, let's say, uh, lots of ride, ride hits here. Okay, so let's say I wanted to have like every fourth note a heavy hit and every note in between that a lighter one. Okay, so one, two, three, four. So I want this one to be heavy. Okay, so I can hold control and keep it low and then go like this. Okay, and then the next one, keep it low. Fourth note, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, now leave that one up there. Okay, so let's listen to that now. Okay, so there's a little bit of a variation there, which again adds the human element to it. So this is how you can edit your drums, your MIDI drums to sound more realistic, adding different velocities to them, because that's how drummers play. If you ever sat and watched a drummer, when big build-up parts start happening that drummer is just hammering on those drums when it's a little quieter they're just tapping on the drums right there's all kinds of velocity ranges happening uh going on with with those um drum hits and that's what makes things sound better right it adds a human element to it so just because you're using a drum program like easy drummer 2 or slate uh drums uh, ssd5 or addictive drums, whatever you're using, it doesn't matter. Um, if you can change the MIDI velocities and the timing of things a little bit to offset them, that adds a human element to it and it makes the drums sound so much better. So thanks for joining me today and uh, we hope to see you again real soon. And we're gonna keep putting out the uh, drum editing tips uh, because uh, drum editing, especially if you're a singer, songwriter, guitar player, you, you like to be able to program your own drums really quickly just so you can start recording something or start building a track or writing a song and these types of things I know always help me to do that. So I want to share that with you. Now, thanks for being here. Uh, thanks for being a subscriber if you are already. And if not, hit the subscribe button below and we will catch you uh, soon. And as always, keep making music.